Good morning and welcome to Coffee with Sister Jacinta as we continue our spiritual journey through the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And during this month of October and this year dedicated to St. Joseph, we'll begin with a prayer addressed to him. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dearest St. Joseph, at the word of an angel, you lovingly took Mary into your home. As God's humble servant, you guided the Holy Family on the road to Bethlehem, welcomed Jesus as your own son in the shelter of a manger, and fled far from your homeland for the safety of both mother and child. We praise God for, I'm sorry, that as their faithful protector, you never hesitated to sacrifice for those entrusted to your care. May your example inspire us also to welcome, cherish, and safeguard God's most precious gift of life. Help us to faithfully commit ourselves to the service and defense of human life, especially where it is vulnerable or threatened. Obtain for us the grace to do the will of God in all things. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So if you are following along in the catechism, we are now beginning number 1861. If you want to use that, you can. Okay. Um, now we've been looking now at sin, okay? Mortal sin, venial sin, okay? The gravity of sin. What also do we look at, okay? Um, to see the weight of even mortal sin and the venial sin, okay? And so we were looking at... Um, unintentional ignorance okay and again it could be intentional ignorance okay which does not okay um, you know allow you to be not uh, culpable all right so um let's just start right in where we are here instead of um redressing all of those so in 1861 we read mortal sin is a radical possibility of human freedom as is love itself, okay? And in, in that in itself, that is something so beautiful to hear, okay? Um, you know, okay, it, it, beautiful and, and scary at the same time, okay? But mortal sin is a radical possibility of human freedom as is love itself. In other words, that human freedom can choose, okay? It can choose, okay, good or evil, love or hatred. And so unfortunately, okay, a misuse of that will, okay, would be to choose, you know, again, for it to be mortal, you have to know it, okay, you have to, um, you know, it has to be great, and you have to choose it, okay, so again, it is, though, a part of that beautiful quality of a human being to have that free will, okay, and to choose, again, God wants us to choose so good, he wants us to choose happiness, he wants us to choose him, um, but we, again, we, we can always fall short on that. So it results in the loss of charity and the privation of sanctifying grace. That is of the state of grace. You know, and sometimes when we're looking at the story of Adam and Eve, sometimes people will be like, well, you know what? You know, they obviously, you know, Eve and, and Adam, you know, like, well, we didn't die. You know what I mean? I mean, like the Lord said we would die. Okay. Now, eventually they do. But they did, okay? Like a lot of times we don't look at that spiritual life. Why were they hiding, okay? Why suddenly was God someone to be feared, um, you know, to be afraid of, where they, they never had that before? But it's because they were no longer in that state of grace, okay? So there was that privation of sanctifying grace, okay? And a loss of charity, that loss of love, okay? If it is not redeemed by repentance and God's forgiveness, it causes exclusion from Christ's kingdom and the eternal death of hell. For freedom has the power to make choices forever with no turning back. However, although we can judge that an act is in itself a grave offense, we must entrust judgment of a person to the justice and mercy of God. Really, a very, very important topic right there because... We are in a world of so much confusion um, and so much failure to teach and, and, and then also false teaching so that um, there may be people who are guilty of objective mortal sin, 
okay, who are not subjectively guilty, okay? And, and they'll be let off with lesser stripes, as our Lord says, okay? Uh, whereas with that knowledge, they would be condemned to hell, okay? Because again, if it's grave and you know it and you choose it, okay, then that's the consequences. And again, although we know there's, there's, a, there's a beautiful sacrament of, okay, reconciliation, penance, confession, whatever word you want to use for it, okay, that can, okay, free us from those bonds, okay, and restore us to charity. But when we look at this, okay, um, that choice, okay, it, 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 as long as you're living on this earth, okay, it can be, okay, you know, um, rejected, okay, there is a turning back where the angels, when they chose, they never had a turning back, they couldn't change their mind, okay, um, they had a clarity in what they were doing, and even though they saw the consequences still, okay, oh, it's so, so far to believe that anyone could do that, but again, when we sometimes, you know, get a little taste of that, you know, I know revenge is not mine, but you know what, I am doing it anyway, how dare they hurt my feelings or hurt my friend's feelings or my spouse's feelings or whoever it was, okay? Um, and, you know, and we sometimes, you know, despite the, despite the fact that we do, we're not allowed, okay? We may end up taking, okay, some of those um, justices, okay, or our idea of justice into our own hands, but we can still regret, okay, after having done that. But we get an idea of what the angels did, okay? We see the consequences, Maybe I'll be put in jail because I actually go ahead and said, you know what? If they murdered my spouse, I'm murdering theirs. Okay. All right. It's a crazy thing that, you know, that the heart does. Okay. Um, you know, that, that sense of getting even. Okay. And making sure that you feel the pain that you've put me into. And, um, but, you know, that it doesn't have to be something permanent as a human being. And, and hopefully not. Okay. Hopefully there can be that regret. And that true, you know, repentance and that desire to amend, um, because that is what we're working with. We're not working with a, a magic, okay, we go to the sacrament. There has to be those dispositions in place as well. But we can't judge another person, okay? Mm -hmm. Remember, you can judge and act. You can say it is right, it is wrong, okay? That is we're allowed to make judgments, okay? We can't make rash judgments. We don't know what's going on in the mind of that person as to whether what their guilt is, okay? Um, and something that the person themselves does not even know, and they have to put it before God as they saw it and see it, you know what I mean? And then allow God's mercy and forgiveness to be there. So those are really, really important distinctions put into that particular paragraph. Um, again, that was at paragraph 1861. If um, again, you want to read that over. 1862, we read one commits venial sin when, in a less serious matter, he does not observe the standard prescribed by the moral law, and when he disobeys the moral law in a grave matter, but without full knowledge or without complete consent. Okay, so that's where we're talking about. Okay. Um, missing mass on Sunday, okay? He misses mass on Sunday on purpose, okay? He wanted to sleep in, but he never ever knew that that was a mortal sin, okay? All right, therefore, all right, he is committing a venial sin, all right, at that point, um, not a mortal sin because of the knowledge, okay? But again, what if it was culpable ignorance, okay? In other words, he purposely was absenting himself from classes okay, whether that was CCD or the Catholic school, okay, when that was taught, well, then that could be culpable, okay, he could be actually responsible, okay, to the degree of a mortal sin, okay, so that's why sometimes we have to leave it in the mercy seat of God as mm -hmm. to where that guilt lies, okay, um, so very, very important for us not to be guilty of purposely becoming ignorant of our faith, okay, and of the requirements to be able to actually, you know, be joyful on this earth, okay, to have that freedom, okay, of the sons of God that God wants us to have. Again, he's not, he's not putting us into bondage. He's taking that bondage away. It's simply that we sometimes think the bondage is actually the, the good, okay, and, um, but um, 
that that needs to be you know like clarified okay so we really understand okay there's a difference between the mortal and the vino okay that knowledge that will okay the the gravity now vino think weakens charity it manifests a disordered affection for created goods mm -hmm. It impedes the soul's progress in the exercise of the virtues and the practice of moral good. It merits temporal punishment. Deliberate and unrepentant venial sin disposes us little by little to commit mortal sin. However, venial sin does not break the covenant with God. With God's grace, it is honorably repairable or humanly, humanly repairable. Venial sin does not deprive the sinner of sanctifying grace, friendship with God, charity, and consequently eternal happiness. This is very important because there is misteaching out there, okay, concerning venial sin and mortal sin, okay, and that mortal sin is actually something you can't really actually commit. It's only um, a, an accumulation of venial sin, and then it comes to a point where it's actually a mortal sin. And, and that's false teaching, okay? There's a difference, okay? You have the three requirements, okay? Grievous matter, knowledge, and, and will, okay? A choice, okay? Free choice, okay? Deliberate choice, all right? And, okay, the only difference between that being a mortal sin and the venial sin is, okay, that something is lacking here, okay? Maybe the knowledge was lacking. Maybe the full consent was lacking. Maybe the fact that it wasn't actually grievous matter. Okay, so again, difference between mortal sin and venial sin. Um, okay, and again, let's look at those consequences for that venial sin. Venial sin weakens charity, okay? Um, that's a big deal, okay? And um, you, you really want to, um, you know, look at that, okay? And, and say, you know, do I want, like, is venial sin something that small? You know, we're so, so sensitive to feelings of people, which is a beautiful thing, okay? But I mean, like, honestly, like, it's amazing how sometimes we will do the wrong thing just because we don't want to hurt someone's feelings, okay? And, you know what I mean? So that sensitivity to others, okay, it's not a good choice necessarily, okay? But that sensitivity is something beautiful. What about God, okay? It ultimately, like, we're, we're lessening our, our relationship, our love, um, our response, okay, to God, okay? There's charity. Okay, something very, very much okay needed. Um, and so venial sin weakens it. It's not something to just um, you know pass over as something small. And you know, especially the more you get to know God, the more you love him, the more the reality of even a slight, okay, is something that breaks your heart. And again, the longer you're married, if you're married with someone, okay, or you have a deep relationship with someone, those small things, because they're so avoidable, sometimes hurt more than the big things, okay? So uh, again, not to get you full of scruples, okay? But also to help you to be sensitive to it at the same time. And again, know yourself, okay? You know what I mean? If that would lead you down a road, okay, that would put you into scruples, just you know, slide past this a little bit of this area here. But if you tend to be someone who's a slacker, maybe you really need to take a few moments and really, really consider this, okay? And not go ahead and wink at being no sin. Okay, it manifests a disorder affection for created goods, okay? In other words, things can, you know, have more of a draw, okay, than they should, okay? So whether that's money or whether that's friends or whether that's a position, okay? Um, you know, a career, you know, a, um, a little um, convenience, okay? Um, you know, all these little things, okay? Some of us, okay, know that they start taking precedence, okay? So I wanted to get a, a manicure today, okay? And oh my goodness, my sister calls and she needs someone to babysit because her husband's in the hospital. Really? Like, you know what? No, I want my manicure, okay? That's where we get like <laughs> our priorities are all out of whack, okay? So that's what we're talking about, okay? This affection for created goods can get really distorted, okay? It impedes the soul's progress in the exercise of virtues and the practice of moral goods, all right? That exercise of virtue, that practice of moral good, because, um, you know, like when you have that, like a charity, okay, you know, you sort of 
start being slack, okay, and and in your vigilance, in your kindness, and your thoughtfulness, okay, because your eyes are beginning to turn more towards yourself than others, okay, and so you see, um, you know, a number of choices, okay, being um, a little bit um, less praiseworthy than what normally you might be doing, okay, it merits temporal punishment, all right, so it's not going to lead you into hell, okay, but because you're failing to respond to an invitation in love, okay, by meeting it with love, you know, it does have uh, that slackening in our relationship. And again, that temporal punishment is that, that making up for that lack of, of love in response to God, okay, and in and, and that, um, you know, and, and God's mercy allowing that time period then to be filled with acts of longing and, and, and repentance, okay, um, in, in purgatory. So deliberate and unrepentant venial sin disposes us little by little to commit mortal sins, all right? So it can lean us to it, it can dispose us. It doesn't mean it will, okay? It doesn't mean they are, okay? An accumulation of venial sins makes a mortal sin. It doesn't work that way, okay? They're totally two different things, okay? But it definitely weakens, okay? And so you think about a, a any kind of, glass that had a lot of beating okay um, the lack of you know care leaves it much more likely now to be able to have a major crack given to it okay because it's been chipped okay and you know um, scratched and all this okay so you're weakening okay and that likelihood of actually having a break okay is much more possible so um, again, something that you need to be very attentive to, okay? And that's why it's a really, really good thing to examine your conscience every day, okay? Before you go to bed, especially, okay, look at the day, see where God's blessings are, see where your weaknesses are, and you know what? Don't hide them from yourselves. You can't hide them from God. Manifest them and beg for his mercy, you know? Tell him of your love and your sorrow for that. If you can get to a confession, I mean, there's a grace that comes with confession to actually strengthen you to especially fight those areas that are weak, okay? But, you know, we can have been no sin and remit it, okay? Even by the use of holy water, okay? Um, you know, God's given us sacramentals that can take away being no sin. But again, I would always, always encourage also going to confession. That willingness to actually say it to God, okay? Okay, through that representative, that priest, okay? and to be able to get medicine that's for it, okay? Like the other ones might not to give you the medicine, but this actually gives you a solution, okay? Uh, not to take it away, but to give you strength for the virtue that's contrary to the one that you confess. So beautiful, beautiful gift that comes from confession. Um, okay, we have a little quote following this, and it says, while he is in the flesh, man cannot help but have at least some light sins. But do not despise these sins, which we call light. If you take them for light, when you weigh them, tremble when you count them. A number of light objects makes a great mass. A number of drops fills a river. A number of grains makes the heap. What then is our hope? Above all, confession. Okay. Again, they are not mortal sins. Okay. Even though like that abundance of them makes them heavy. Okay. All right, that does not equate the fact that at some point they become a being with it. Okay, those are two very different matters. Okay, it's just simply that it actually affects your relationship with God and, um, and then also your relationship with others, ultimately your destiny. Okay, because the likelihood then of falling into mortal sin is very, very, very much heightened. Okay, when we um, allow for being no sin. And, um, and don't really have any repentance for it. 1864, therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven then, but the blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven. There are no limits to the mercy of God, but anyone who deliberately refuses to accept his mercy by repenting, rejects the forgiveness of his sins and the salvation offered by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> this is what we're talking about when we talk about the sin against the Holy Spirit. Many people are mystified by that, okay? But 
you can't be forgiven for what you refuse to recognize as being wrong. Okay. Um, you know, so if you can work out your own salvation and don't need God, or your sin is too big, okay, and therefore you despair, okay, either one of those, okay, doesn't allow for the mercy of God, okay? They would be sins against the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is prompting you, is teaching you, is leading you, okay, to, okay, this repentance for sin, um, and to trust in the mercy of God, and you need both, okay? So that you don't want to have... Um, presumption okay that you can do it on your own and you don't want to spare so such hardness of heart can lead to final impenitence and eternal loss okay so this is again uh why it's a really good idea to remain very attentive to your day to your relationship with god to examine it okay once a day and again really especially when you do the exam and follow that baker okay uh formula that looking at your blessings okay that you can thank god okay asking him for the grace to help you to know um, the graces that he held out to you, okay? And then the K, okay, I always heard how you killed the spirit, okay? In other words, how we did not work with those graces that God gave us, okay? And be willing to admit that, okay? Um, you know, maybe how I was a killjoy, okay? You know, um, for those who were actually going forward with full energy to love God, okay? And maybe my bad example, my... Um, my, my little sarcasm, whatever, okay, um, ended up crippling that particular effort, okay, so we look at it, but, you know, I love the fact that St. Ignatius says, don't spend, spend the least amount of time on that, okay, immediately then let God embrace you, that's that E in Baker, okay, um, you know, with a heart that's repentant, and then make a resolution, okay, whether it's just simply, you know, that tomorrow, okay, I'm going to do an act of kindness for this person, or I'm going to make an extra visit to the church, um, or I'm just going to try to remember on every hour just to say, my Jesus, I love you, I trust you. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to have anything to do with that day, okay? But, you know, sometimes it might be a good thing to tie it in, okay? Especially if I've been irritable and I'm going to meet that same person tomorrow, okay? <laughs> so maybe that resolution might need to be a little bit concrete. All right, proliferation of sin. Sin creates a, pro, a, pro, a proclivity, a proclivity, proclivity, okay, to sin. It engenders vice by repetition of the same act. This results in perverse inclinations which cloud conscience and corrupt the concrete judgment of goodwill. I'm sorry, of good and evil. Um, thus, sin tends to reproduce itself and reinforce itself but it cannot destroy the moral sense at its root, okay? And this is where I was mentioning in the beginning of this section, okay, about the fact that some of these people say they, they, they killed their conscience, okay? Okay, you can't completely kill it, but you can definitely make it deaf, okay, to, and blind in many ways, okay, to the evil of what you're doing. Um, you know, with it being practiced enough times and with excuses being put there enough time, it is amazing. Okay, how we can then what's called engender vice, okay, by repetition. Um, you know, that pro proclivity, okay, with that tendency to sin, okay, we can create that, okay, by again, uh, winking at small things. And as you wink at small things, then the next thing doesn't seem to be that bad. And the next one doesn't seem so bad, okay. I remember when I was in college and I took a psychology class, which I love taking. Um, and they had done films, okay, for, they had, you know, people who got a certain money, okay, if they were willing to be part of an experiment, and so part of this, um, the one experiment, okay, was to take two groups of people, and they separated them, and um, they were both shown a movie, okay, and it was violent, and it was offensive sexually, okay, and they were to write about it, okay, and they were angry, okay, and they were disgusted, but because they had signed up, okay, they watched the second movie, okay? Now, when they watched the second movie, they said it was bad, but it was nothing compared to the first one. The first one was awful. Now, what they didn't know is they'd each seen an opposite movie, okay? So they watched this movie here, okay? And all they did is take the same movie and move it to the opposite, okay, theaters, okay? And had them both watch that movie. 
the sense of already mm -hmm. having been seeing something that was bad desensitized them so that by the second time they were exposed to it it didn't seem as bad mm -hmm. okay um and this is what they mean by this proclivity okay in other words we can become in um desensitized okay to sin by by it being something that we allow ourselves to see hear touch perform you know whatever it might be okay um so this is something that we definitely want to be alerted to okay and and recognize um you know that so that can be like listening to music okay you can hear you know terrible topics okay in in music um, but you can become desensitized and it could just become like, no, it's okay. And you know what, but the, the act itself doesn't seem so bad because it's been made into a beautiful song or tone or tune or beat. Um, and, and so we can lessen, okay, our sensitivity there. Okay, we read in, um, in 1866, vices can be classified according to the virtues they oppose or also be linked to the capital sins, which Christian experience um, has distinguished following St. John Cassian and St. Gregory the Great. They are called capital because they engender other sins or other vices. And they are pride, avarice, envy, wrath, gl lust, gluttony, sloth, and acedia. Okay, or acedia, okay, sloth or acedia. And acedia is, is more like spiritual sloth, okay? Um, but I always learn, like, okay, so I like little ways of memorizing, like I like the cardinal virtues being Father John Paul II, okay, take those first letters there, and you've got the justice, you've got prudence, you've got fortitude, and you've got temperance. When it came to learning the capital sins, I learned places G, okay, so P being pride, L being lust, okay, A being avarice, um, C being covetousness, okay, and I'm thinking if they use a different word there for covenantness. Um, I'm seeing which one they put there. That would be the avarice, okay, for them, okay. Um, I, for A, I'm sorry, I would probably usually be anger, okay. Sorry, for places for the A, I put anger. Avarice, okay, would be that idea of um, being jealous, I think, okay. I'm, I'm always getting avarice and, and wrath always mixed up, okay. <laughs> anyway, I'm pretty sure avarice is going to be that the, the uh, equivalent of a jealousy, okay, because jealousy and envy are different. Jealousy is everything is for me, okay. Um, so the avarice, you mean you're just everything, I, I don't have enough of anything, you know what I mean? Um, and then, you know, envy is, I am so unhappy about what someone else has, okay? It makes me miserable, okay? And I'll do things to actually destroy the reputation of another because if they've got a good reputation, then my reputation isn't as great, okay? Um, so that there's a difference between the jealousy and the envy. Um, okay, and then, so I have places, G, okay? So I have the pride, I have the lust, okay? We'll have anger, okay? Instead of wrath, okay? Um, we've got... Um, the C being covetous, okay, we've got the E being envy, and then um, places S, okay, you got sloth, okay, and then you've got G being gluttony. Okay, so anyway, those are things that help me to memorize those particular ones, and these are not necessarily, they're sometimes called deadly sins, okay? Now, it just means that they're the ones that are sneaking in and being the cause of sin, Okay, like the other thing that you can look at underneath is say, what is the, the, the one, the main thing that typically gets me, okay? So if it is jealousy, okay, then I gotta be aware that I need to be happy with what I have, okay? And happy, you know what I mean, to, um, I'm sorry, I forgot whether I said je jealousy or, or envy, I don't know which one I started with, okay? If it was jealousy, okay, I gotta be willing to share, okay? I got to be able to see things as a gift, okay, to be able to be shared. If it's envy, I've got to be willing, okay, to be very grateful, like practice gratitude, okay, for what you have, okay, all right, and, and content with who you are, okay, because then you're not envious of another person, okay, and then you can promote other people's things um, to overcome that tendency, but, you know, being aware of your particular weakness is very helpful. You know, if it's lust, okay, then lust is actually very selfish. It's all about me gaining, okay, um, me having pleasure, you know. Um, so 
I can be all about charity, okay, if I have that, okay? So you can have opposite ways of going about, okay, um, you know, to be able to counter that particular weakness. And typically, we all have one that really pulls in us more than another. And once we start going in that particular, going against that particular um, vice, okay, that particular capital sin, we can get a whole bunch of other virtues all put in place, okay? We can actually take care of a whole bunch of other things that might be there. So maybe um, my main one is lust, okay? And as I begin to realize, okay, that it's not all about me having pleasure, okay, and self, you know, whatever, um, indulgence and all this, and I think about others, I can actually then become less angry, okay? I can become less gluttonous, okay? Um, a lot of things suddenly, okay, and because of that, I'm actually now not as proud, okay, prideful, because I'm not looking at myself. And so sometimes that one virtue actually steers all the other virtues into place, okay? So usually finding your particular weakness, okay? Again, it's not, it's a deadly sin simply because it's, it's hidden, it's under there, it's the underlying thing that's going to get you, okay? Um, it doesn't mean that it's a mortal sin, okay? Um, but once you know that particular tendency, it's sort of like a, a cheat sheet, okay? Like, hey, you know what? This is the one I got to fight against. What are the ways in which you fight it, okay? And then once you start fighting it, a lot of other things get put into the right order. So I hope that made sense. Um, and let me just continue so we get this finished here. And it says in 1867, that the catechetical tradition also recalls that there are sins that cry to heaven. The blood of Abel, the sin of sodomites, the cry of the people oppressed in Egypt, the cry of foreigners, the widow, and the orphan, injustice to the wage earner, okay? Sin is a personal act. Moreover, we have a responsibility for the sins committed by others when we cooperate in them, okay? And we cooperate in them by participating directly and voluntarily in them, by ordering, advising, praising, or approving them, okay? Voting for people that we know, okay, are specifically saying that they are going to endorse a sin, okay? That is cooperating in it, okay? That is praising or approving it, okay? Um, okay, or we could be cooperating it by not disclosing or not hindering them when we have an obligation to do so, and also by protecting the evildoer. All right, so uh, that's a lot of information right there in that particular paragraph. So we might actually start there tomorrow. But going back again, all right, and that last one before it, it, I thought they might cooperate with each other, but they don't really. They give it two very separate thoughts. The catechetical tradition also recalls that there are sins that cry to heaven. Mm -hmm. The blood of Abel, okay, that's murder, okay? Um, and that would include, okay, abortion. They cry to heaven, all right? Uh, the sin of sodomites, okay? All right, we, we see that being glorified in our time thrown down our throats, okay, uh, pushed in school, okay, um, and, and this is something that cries to heaven, okay, like this is uh, something that is so, so opposed to the will of God, okay, the oppression of others, taking away their free will, God made us with a free will, and, you know, a mind to be able to think on its own, and when those two, okay, are deprived of, okay, one or the other, okay, is a cry to heaven. Okay, you have the cry of the foreigner, the widow, the orphan, okay? Okay, so often the neglect that has gone on and the taking advantage, okay, and the abuse, okay? Um, and again, we see this so, so strongly, okay, in our society um, at this time. Okay, the injustice, okay, of... Um, to wage, uh, to wage earners, okay, to give an unfair, um, you know, um, wage, you know, so there's so many people out here who, when they get to their particular job, you know, um, interview, they're promised all these things, all these benefits, and then when they get the job, oh, well, that's delayed because you, know, you have three months, okay, um, you know, probation, and, and then, oh, well, you know, like, you have to be able to take this class here, and a whole year where they've got no benefits, okay, and none coming down the road either, 
you know, or the wage oh, was actually cut. Oh, we know what we had this particular thing happen and they're giving half the salary of what they said. So you see a lot of injustices out there, okay? So that a person can hardly even pay a rent, okay? Um, or their medical bills or whatever it might be. So again, these are things that, you know, we need to be able to look at and where we can have an ability to change that, to do so. Um, where we need to be able to help someone who's in the midst of suffering those injustices, then we try to help them. All right. So thank you. Um, yeah, let's thank close you, with dear. a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, help us to be able to always keep our hearts open um to you to be sensitive to all that will give you glory and help us also to be sensitive to our neighbor for in loving them we know that we should demonstrate our love for you amen amen the father and the son of the holy spirit amen thank you and god bless you